Underfloor heating day today, which is always one of the uh, monumentous, monumentous parts of the job. Couldn't get my words out then, because I'm that excited. Uh, I was gonna, let's have a look what he's up to, and I'll try and talk you through as much as I can throughout this episode of what's going on. Uh, I know sometimes we don't get the opportunity to actually talk you through from start to finish, but on this job, I have got that option, so I, uh, I will try and do it for you. So what Callum's doing first is, he's running a um, foam strip all the way around, which acts as an expansion for the screed. Uh, then what he's gonna do is, he's gonna get another, uh, what will be uh, the third layer of DPM on the job, because don't forget, we've had one under the concrete, one on top of the concrete under the insulation, and now this one, so it's the third one. In fact, you can still see it sticking out there, because I haven't quite trimmed it back, everything else, I've tried to trim it back all nice and tidy. So we'll do that first. Once his DPM's down, getting me way in my own camera there. Um, once this is down, what he'll then do is we will mark on with some spray where the kitchen is because you don't put on the floor heating under your kitchen. For the simple reason is if you start heating up your cupboards, it doesn't it affects your food a little bit, so you don't do that. And plus, it's also a waste, isn't it? So we'll get this done first, uh, and I'll talk you through the next stage once you've start putting the DPM down. So the first stages are complete, then we've put down the um, expansion frame around the edge we talked about, we've put down the DPM. What Callum's doing now is he's, he's taped the, the joints and he's taping all the way around the edge to his expansion frame as well now. You've just seen me on the time lapse um, add on where the kitchen is, so the runner unit's there and that's where the island is there. So of course he'll come round here and you'll see it in a minute, come round here with the pipes now before they go through that hole over there into the utility. Manifolds on the wall then. And for those of you who like to pay attention to my videos, yes, I oh know, I should have put them over that side. But there we are, it is what it is, but um, it is a quick fix. I mean, this is this has got to come off anyway. It's all going to be drained in anyway to connect it, so you just take them across here and up that side. But um, there we are, I made a quick decision, and I didn't want to put them over here because I was just concerned about the pipes coming this way and everything going on all there, so it is what it is. Um, but that is ready to go now um, and we can start laying the pipes on the floor.
So, facts and figures time. This is being set at 200 mil centers on the pipe, and this is off a traditional um, boiler system. I'm told if you are coming off an air source heat pump, it's got to be 100 to 150 mil centers instead. So, in other words, the pipe's closer together. Next fact and figure is that one loop can't be any more than, and they work on 100 meters of pipe. Uh, which is 20 square meters down, you say? That's it, my man, yeah. About 20 square meters or 100 meters of pipe is one loop, not one zone, one loop. So this is going to be one zone in itself, controlled by one thermostat. But one loop is just the amount, and you can see he's just started the second one now. It's just that bit there and this bit here is one loop because it, it's going towards the it's actually 120, do you say, Dan? Yeah, but you work 120. on 100. Max 120, but he works on 100. Better safe than sorry and all that. So hence, it's going to be two loops in this system, yet it's going to be one zone. So what Callum's doing now is he's connecting the, the second loop. And as I've just said, it's not a zone thing. It's just the amount of pipe you're allowed to put in or they for efficiency and whatever. Is that right, Callum? Yeah, yeah for efficiency. Right. 100 meters so that's the that's the first one there he's just put in and this is now the first leg of the second one and that will go all the way around that Dan's doing now and come back in and connect onto the return on the bottom one so what they're doing now and you might be able to hear it on the uh, footage if I'll be quiet they're just filling up the system so they uh, obviously put water into it what they do then is um, they pressurize the system to check for any leaks, leave it for so long, like you would do any pressurising in any system to check it. Uh, and then once they're happy, obviously disconnect it and the water gets left in the system then, as far as I'm aware. I don't think they're drying it down, I think it's all been left in the system. So the pipe hole has all been taped up, ready for the screed to make sure it doesn't flow into there, which is a good idea. And I'm gonna ask Dan to mention what these are called now, because I forget. Tripod. Just It is just a simple it's tripod. So he, what he'll do now, he'll set these on top of the, uh, the DPM he's put down and set the height of this part. You're going to correct me if I'm wrong now, Dan, but that sits on there like that, doesn't it? That's it, Mom. And then this gets, he can't get you in shot, and this gets adjusted yeah. to that, to it's the laser, light, exactly. to the depth that you want of the screed. <coughs> yeah, and, and then one, one perfect plane. Yeah. yeah, and that's it. And then they all get set to the laser over there. And then the flow screw then gets poured up to that point. So I've got a simple system that works really effective. I shall speak to Dan asking what the screw is called then, because I keep forgetting. Gypsum base and hydrate. It's called Giblon, basically. Okay. It's but there's many different types that we've talked about. Too many to mention, but exactly there's, there's right many right. different types. Yeah. But we are using the one that is just mentioned now on this floor. The important things to note are. It's got to be sanded to allow it the drying time to be to be to be better. There's a skin on top of it. Yeah. It seals the moisture in, so it needs to be sanded off to let the moisture out. People make the mistake, oh I don't need sanding because I'm using this and that that's not stuck to the floor. But right. it seals in the So moisture. it's nothing to do with the fact that what you're on the floor, the floor covering, is to do with the trapping the moisture inside the slab. Yeah, the skin. Yeah, the skin that's why it, that's why it needs sanding, yeah. not because the flooring. That's exactly right. There we are. Because I think I was told personally that it was because of the, oh, you're having LVT, you're going to be sanded. And that isn't the case at all. So there we are, straight from the experts. That's why. that door. Last minute decision, we realised after getting the laser and doing all the dipping for the, um, the screed that the bottom of the doors were going to catch a little bit. So I had to cut off my bit of pipe there, which is the cable fever over here, if you remember, and take the doors off uh, and they will stop off now until next week. And all I'll do, I'll just cut the bottom off and put them back on the pins, just hook them back on the pins again. But they'll be off for the weekend now. Which is a shame, but uh, luckily it's a nice warm day, so we should be okay. So what you see on the screen now is, a, is what's called a slump test, and the reason for this is uh, what Dan's going to talk you through now. Okay. So what's the red circle bit for? Red circle is the optimum 
uh, slump basically. When it comes on the wagon, we always test it, mm -hmm. and it's in millimeters. Yeah, so it goes from, you know, hundred to two hundred eighty mil. Okay. Yeah. So if it comes and it's too dry, yeah, we add water, yeah, to get it to that optimum performance basically. Uh, so it's flowing correctly. It's all about the flow right. of the screed. If it's too dry, it won't flow properly. Right. It won't finish properly. Right. If it's too wet, you have to send it back. So you always do a slump test. Okay. Yeah. If it's over three hundred, you'd have to turn the wagon away and say it's too wet. Too wet. Okay. But if, if it comes, it usually comes a little bit drier. So you, you can, can add, add water, water. Yeah. To get it to your optimum, two fifty, two sixty, two seventy. And yours is two fifty, two two forty, two fifty, which is which is which perfect. Is perfect. Yeah. Okay. That's all done, all looking nice in the sunshine. He pulled the doors too, because he said what he doesn't want is it to dry too quick. So he's pulled the doors just to stop the, the constant through draft. And it is quite warm today as well, considering it's uh, 4th of October, I think it is today. So it is relatively warm, especially here, it's being south facing. So he's closed his door just as so it doesn't get uh, dry too quickly. So there we have it. I am happy with that. <coughs> the job finishes off with tidy up, clean all the machine off, taking everything away, ready for the next one, but not today, this is the last one of the day, so I'll keep that away, and this is their own machine, and then you didn't quite catch it, you might have caught it in the background of the slump test, um, but uh, yeah, they just get a machine and it dumps it into here, and then they use their own pump then to pump it through these tubes, a bit like the normal concrete and what have you, or any other liquid screen, pump it straight round, as we left it, except this is now dry and we can walk on it and the weather isn't as great as it was on Friday. So here it is, a few uh, condensation drips because what's happening is it's condensating on that up there with the cooler air and the heat coming out of here. It's uh, dripping, so unfortunately it dropped on the floor before it was fully cured, which isn't a problem because it's got to be sanded and latex yet, so not a massive deal at all. And if you really want to go that further on is the fact that there's an arm there as well so it really doesn't matter so my first job today is to remove that sink unit or that run of uh, unit and what's it there and put it into our newly formed utility you're already aware if you've seen episodes previously that that is now up and running all our pipe works in other than um, this, which you know is all pressure tested, we've just got to connect the flow return to it, which the plumber's going to do for me in a few days. But at the moment, you can't even think about putting underflow heating on, uh, or be very, very low for at least seven days. So I'll leave it for a couple of weeks, and then once this is connected, we'll start our stage of very, very low. And I'm told you can go up a degree per day, and then come down again. Anyway, I'll discuss that with him. He did tell me, but there was a lot of information last week. Uh, during last week's episode so i'm going to get him to uh, write it down for me so i can match it's done correctly so what i'm going to do now water off that's my water feed remember i'll disconnect all of that and we'll have a look at moving it
progress has been made. You will notice straight away that they've gone from here and they are now in here. I've uh, cut the old worktop that was there originally when I first come. Uh, I took it out and used it, if you remember, temporarily in there. I've just cut it down because I've obviously reduced this width by 20 mil by putting that on, that on the wall then, insulating it. So I've cut that back in, cut it around the pipes for now and screwed it in place. Now that is sort of where it's going to be. There's a tall 500 order going there and that's sort of where it's got to be other than that, because this is such a big worktop at the minute, that can go back another <coughs> six inches. <coughs> Excuse me. That can go back another six inches or so, maybe even more than that. If you look under there, there's quite a, a big space under there already, but I've pulled it forward just so it's uh, easier, ease of use for now. I've moved this over this way a little bit further than we need to because the um, one I'm going to put back here just so they can carry on using it, the existing one, is a metre and I'm going to put a 900 in here. So I've moved it over that way 100 mil so they can get it in. Uh, and then I've got all my waste air to go. Water set on my water up and, uh, and that's it. I have just disconnected the mains under there, disconnected all the waste, just waiting for that to fully drain down before I attempt to uh, remove this. I may just go under there and cut the, um, or take, sorry, take the butterfly bolts off, the worktop joint bolts off, and then see if I can ease it up. But um, what I don't want to do is damage this, this too much if I can help it, because that'll be stopping in place for a little bit, at least for the next few days anyway. We talked about last episode about putting this in, but what's going to happen there is, we've decided, um, that all this is coming out. Took this bit of plywood off. Uh, I thought I'd got more fixings in it, but it took me that much to effort to pull it off the foam. That foam really is good stuff, and that is that Bondit um, easy grab, quick grab, whatever it's called, I can't remember now. That's what I've used up here, just to hold it. I've got an, a half empty can, so I thought, you know what, I'll just use that, or half full, depending which way you like to look at things in life. Uh, and I've used it up there, and it, it was proper stuck. It didn't not want to come off. I had to, in the end, I had to leave it off with a claw on it. So I'm gonna take this out now, get the plumbing sorted and put it in there and give the customers a working utility and sink again.